We know that measured quantities have uncertainties associated with them. What happens when we perform calculations with these quantities? How do the uncertainties accumulate? Let's suppose we have a calculation to do. And the calculation involves a function of measured values we'll represent with x, y, and z. The calculated result we get we'll call r. What's the variance in r? What, well, it turns out that the variance in r is the weighted sum of the variances in all of the measured parameters. So we take x, the standard deviation, and x and square it, or give it the variance, and we multiply it by a weighting factor, and the weighting factor is the partial derivative of that function with respect to the variable squared. So we have a similar term for all the other measured variables. So the partial derivative with respect to y times the variance in y plus the partial derivative with respect to z squared times the variance in c, and so on for all of the measured quantities. This works out to reduce to a fairly simple rule for a number of different uh, types of calculations. For example, let's in consider addition and subtraction. Let's suppose we have the addition of quantities x and y, and maybe we'll subtract z. Well, this turns out to be just the square, or the variance in the variance in r is equal to the variance in x plus the variance in y plus the variance in c. Since their partial derivatives all become 1 or minus 1 in this case, but when we square it, the coefficient's 1. Let's take a more concrete example. Uh, let's suppose r is just the sum of three quantities and we're going to show in the bracket the plus and minus of their standard deviation. So we're going to add 21.1 to 50.0 and the 50 has a an uncertainty or standard deviation of 0.2 and add 13.42 with a standard deviation of 0.01. R works out to be just 84.5. The next digit would be a 2. So what's the, the variance in R? According to our rule here, is just the sum of the variances of the individual terms. So the variance in the first case is 0.1 squared. The variance for the second is 0.2 squared and the variance in this term is 0.01 squared. Numerically, that gives us a value of 0 0.0501. So the absolute error is just the square root of that number. Which is numerically equal to 0 0.223 if we carry three digits in this standard deviation. So we can recap by saying for addition and subtraction the variances add directly. How about multiplication and division? Let's suppose r is equal to x times y over z. Well the relative variances then accumulate so the relative variance in the result is equal to the relative variance in each of the measured quantities. Let's take a concrete example. Let's suppose that R 
is calculated by the product of 2.2 times 4.01 and they have associated standard deviations and let's suppose we divide by the quantity 0.0026 and it has an uncertainty of 0 0.0006. Numeric value of R is 3.3 .3, and the next digits are 9 and a 3 times 10 to the third. The relative error in R is just the ratio of each standard deviation divided by the associated value squared plus 0 0.01 over 401 squared plus 0 0.0006 over 0 0.0026 squared. That works out to be 2.0 and the next digit's a 6, maybe another 6, and then times 10 to the minus 3. This ratio is 6.2 and then 1 8 times 10 to the minus 6 and then 5.325 times 10 to the minus 2 or 0 0.05532. So S over R is equal to the square root of that number. Zero point two three. Five, if we carry our standard deviation out to three significant figures. Now we can take this to the absolute value. The absolute error is just the relative error that we calculated just now times the measurement itself. The result for this ratio was 3.3 nine three times ten to the third or the absolute error become seven point nine seven times ten to the third to the second so the take-home message is for multiplication and division the relative variances add we occasionally work with exponential equations, such as r is equal to x to the nth power. Now this is going to be like multiplying n different factors. So the relative error in our result is equal to n times the relative error in the term for x. For example, let's imagine that we calculate 0.45 plus or minus an error of 0.01, and we square that. That would equal a value for R of 0.2025. We then calculate a relative error for the result, and that is just 2 times 0 0.01 over 0 0.45 or 0 0.044. The absolute error then for the result is just the relative error times the result itself or the number we just calculated for 0.044 times 0 0.2025. In this case, that gives us a number 0 
zero eight nine. One more function that we work with a lot is calculating a logarithm. Let's imagine we have a result that's the natural log of some variable x. Or uh, common logs are, show up a lot. Let's take the common log of y and call that our result a. Well, the result, or the error in the result, is just the relative error in x. That's kind of neat. The relative error in the result for a common log is 0.434 times the relative error in the number we're calculating on. So for example, if we're doing a calculation taking a common log, or excuse me, a natural log of 6.523 and the error involved in that number is 0 0.007, the result is 1.875 and the absolute error in that result is going to be 0 0.007 divided by 6.253, or numerically equal to 0 0.00107.